Thank you for buying a genuine NoraSeal Series 1001 level controller. In this video, we'll talk about installation and startup. The first thing you want to do after unpacking your controller is to visually inspect the unit for any evidence of shipping damage. Check the nameplate to verify that you have the right product with the right supply and outlet pressure, displacer material and rating, body size and material, ANSI class, and pressure and temperature limits for your application. You can find it in the case. When you ordered your level controller, Norasil manufactured it specifically for your operating conditions, particularly pressure, temperature, and fluid conditions. Don't install your level controller under any conditions other than what it was ordered for. And another quick warning, if you go back to the nameplate for a second, you'll see that the maximum allowable pressure at the maximum temperature is clearly indicated. If pressure to the level controller is capable of exceeding these limits, you'll need to install relief valves or other overpressure protection devices in the pressure lines. Now let's get back to installing your level controller. This illustration shows a direct acting right hand mount controller. The Series 1001 level controllers are also available in left mounted and back mounted options. The 1001 series controllers are based on the forced balance principle. A spring balances the weight of a displacement type sensing element. As liquid rises around the displacer, the amount of force available to the pilot is proportional to the weight of the liquid displaced. The force available is transmitted to the pilot thrust pin through a lever and fulcrum. The higher the level, the greater the force available to the pilot thrust pin. This control is called direct acting, meaning the rising level increases pilot output when the pivot point of the lever is on the spring side of the control case. The control is reverse acting, meaning rising level decreases pilot output when the pivot point of the lever is on the opposite side of the control case from the spring. Now you can adjust the proportional band by moving the sensitivity fulcrum toward or away from the snap ring to achieve the desired span. You can adjust the level by increasing or decreasing the tension on the spring. When properly adjusted, fluid will rise on the displacer to a predetermined set point. This will produce an output. This wide range of control makes liquid interface sensing possible. Your controller will arrive in three or four pieces. The controller body and case assembly, the displacer, the displacer arm, and if you specified a vertical installation, the swivel. You'll need to assemble these pieces, but before you get started, make sure that all threaded or gasketed surfaces on both the controller and the vessel are free of any foreign materials. Once you've done that, you can insert the displacer arm in the opening of the controller body. Be careful to align the displacer arm with the body shaft and screw the arm into the shaft. If this is a vertical installation, screw the swivel onto the free end of the displacer arm. Then screw the displacer either into the free end of the displacer arm for horizontal applications or the free end of the swivel for vertical applications. Always follow good piping practices. Make sure you have a suitable gasket in between the body and pipeline flanges. And for threaded NPT bodies, use proper thread sealant. Now, you'll connect the instrument air to the controller supply connection on the back of the controller. The supply and output connections are clearly marked. On the 1001 controller, it is the upper connection. On the 1001A and 1001XL controllers, it is the connection on the right side when looking at the rear of the controller case. Connect the control valve signal line to the output connection. Next, open the case and rock the torque bar by hand to make sure the displacer arm moves freely and is not resting against the vessel nozzle or other obstruction. The arm should be close to the center in the connection opening and parallel to the ground. If you need to, turn the adjusting knob under the balance spring to position the arm in the center of the connection opening. This is pretty easy. First, make sure the displacer arm is centered in the vessel nozzle. To decrease the level, turn the spring adjustment knob under the balance spring clockwise to increase compression on the balance spring. To raise the level, turn the knob counterclockwise to decrease compression on the balance spring. Next, you can adjust the proportional band, sometimes called the dump span, by first loosening the thumb screw on the sensitivity fulcrum. Slide the fulcrum along the flapper bar toward the pilot to decrease the proportional band and increase sensitivity. Slide the fulcrum along the flapper bar to increase the proportional band and decrease sensitivity. When you reach the proper span, tighten the thumb screw on the sensitivity fulcrum and you're done. Set the sensitivity fulcrum one quarter inch from the snap ring. Reduce the spring tension slowly by turning the adjusting knob counterclockwise and let the upper fluid rise to submerge the displacer. After the displacer is fully submerged in the upper fluid, you can fine tune the controller by slowly increasing spring tension by turning the adjusting knob clockwise until you get an output signal. Then back the tension off slowly by turning the adjusting knob counterclockwise until the output signal pressure returns to zero. If a longer dump span is desired, move the fulcrum farther away from the snap ring and repeat the procedure. 
For more information, download our new 1001 series operations and maintenance manual at www.norseal.com.